But wait, there's more. Are there perhaps any other ways to trigger this bug? Well, Mimoji says, hmm, and then Mimoji says, aha, and then Mimoji says, oh no. Yes, bonus bug type confusion, CV 2022-21882. And this I actually found first before finding that it was a variant of the previous one. So interestingly, reference nine showed that at the time of the original bug, there was only one path to this XXX client alloc window class extra bytes. Recall that's the function that the attacker hooks in user space to change out what's called in order to cause the ultimate type confusion. So originally at the time this was patched, there was only one way to get to this and it was through XXX create window X. However, later on, it turns out that the author suggested that this XXX validate class and size function which itself calls to the XXX client alloc window class extra, that this function got inlined in a bunch of other functions, and that meant that this call to XXX client alloc window class extra bytes got inlined into a bunch of functions as well. So basically, this is just, you know, cross references. It's saying, you know, originally older code, there was a single cross reference to XXX client, and it was in create window X and newer code, there were now multiple references. So there's two, four, six references. So if you then think back, the fix for the previous vulnerability was a fix inside create window X. It was not inside of this function. So if the only fix is here, we can play those games with NT user console control and cause the type confusion. Then perhaps if we go through one of these other paths, we will still be able to achieve the exact same vulnerability. And that is indeed what happened. So the funny thing here was I just assumed that this was a typical thing that often happens to developers where, you know, they, they look at the particulars of an exploit and they go and they put a patch and then it doesn't cover other control flow paths. But it was very interesting to me that 9 basically showed that, okay, there was only one f control flow path at the time of patch. It was just some code modification occurred that caused this inlining to occur, which subsequently added a whole bunch of new control flow paths that reopened an old vulnerability. So in the public proof of concept exploits, there is the use of NT user message call, and that ultimately calls into kernel space XXX switch window proc, which was one of those cross-reference things that ultimately calls to XXX client alloc window class extra bytes. I've shown the actual control flow path here just because I was curious and one of the references showed it, but you know, most things just said, oh yeah, somehow they call this and it gets to that and that calls to that, but they didn't actually say like what the sequence of function calls was. So from reference nine, they've shown the XXX validate class and size. This is the function that they said got inlined. And if you look at reference 11, you'll actually see that they showed a different function uh, and it has the exact same uh, control flow. And so this is kind of proof that it was this function that got inlined. So basically I assume that the author of nine just took this function from an older version before the inline happened and was uh, decompiling it just to show it by itself. So what happens here? So the attacker somehow gets here and, you know, we said that the somehow is via XXS switch window proc called from user space via this. So they somehow get here, they invoke it, they cause it to call XXX client alloc window class extra bytes. We know that that goes back out to user space, user space can hook it, and an attacker controlled value can be sent back uh, and the little game can be played with the changing of the type. So acid value comes back here and then it checks if it's zero it's going to return zero so we're going to assume that's non-zero then there's just some grabbing of a pointer to the tag window k another sanity check we don't care about and so then doesn't hit the else case down here it pulls out again a pointer to the p extra bytes from the p tag window k and then it says so so this thing the p extra bytes at this point assuming the attacker played the game that they played with the previous exploit it would have set the, you know, bit 11, the hex 800, and it would have caused a normal allocation in kernel space to be assigned to the P extra bytes. That would now be an offset, right? So that would be an existing real offset. So if that, that should be non-zero, so that's true. And then if this, this should be non-zero because the attacker passed something in. But then this kind of threw me for a little bit here. So this is a mem move of size. Well, that was the attacker controlled size. The source is the existing, you know, legitimate kernel allocation plus what I assume is the offset, like 
Uh, sorry, this is an offset from the base, and I assume this is the base, even though it's not being called the base. And the destination is then the attacker-controlled location that they pass back. But if you recall the previous exploit, the attacker would set this to some small value. This is an offset into the kernel heap. This is not a full pointer value. So I was trying to understand, like, why is this not crashing? You know, using our previous placeholder values, if this is 300, if you're mem moving in kernel to address 300, that's probably not going to be allocated and that should cause a crash. So I spoke to the author of Nine about this, Lays, and he helpfully provided me with the information that it turns out that the deallocation is missing the fact that this mem move is inside a try except block. So the mem move is in here, it's in a try except block, and subsequently, if that was going to cause, you know, a crash, that would be caught and the accept is doing essentially nothing. You know, again, you're not supposed to know assembly, but just looking at this assembly and eyeballing it versus the previous pseudocode, uh, it's kind of clear to me that this is just this kind of stuff right here, right? So the mem move occurs and then this happens and then there's a call to XX client free. So mem move occurs and then stuff happens, some data structure access, and then there's this call to XX client window free. So essentially, if this thing is given an invalid address, it turns out because it's in the try accept block, it is not actually going to crash. So now this all makes a little bit more sense and we can see how this actually would proceed. So the attacker calls NT user message call. They've got their malicious handle and then it goes into kernel space. Ultimately through a couple of calls, it leads to XX switch window proc. That will do an if the there is a non-zero extra size of bytes, then it'll go ahead and call into user space. And as before, attacker will hook that. Then they'll do the same game as the previous exploit into user console control in to cause the kernel allocation and the setting of the flag to cause the type confusion. And then it returns back and then returns the fully acid value that will subsequently be set for p extra bytes. So boom, returned, that's now acid. And then how does the rest of this code work in XX switch proc window? Well, again, it takes this, this value, which was assigned here. That's a clean value, puts it into this pointer. Uh, just another variable. Again, that's probably just based on the decompilation. The real code is probably not written that way. And so then it takes that and it checks, is that non-zero? Well, it should be because again, this thing shouldn't return zero, otherwise it'll error out. And then it says, is this non-zero? And it also should be because the attacker wants that to be non-zero to go clobber the p extra byte. And so then it gets into this try accept mem move. So they've got an attacker controlled size. You've got the offset plus the base, which should be the you know, full address of the existing allocation. And it's moving it to the attacker controlled place, but because it's in try accept, it's going to catch that and it's not going to crash. And subsequently they will be able to get down to here and the attacker controlled value will be put into the tag wind K exactly like the attacker previously did via the create window X, but in this case, they just used a different function. So net result, type confusion here via NT user console control, and then ultimate overwrite here. And at this point, then it's going to be the same kind of vulnerability as before. They've flipped the switch to cause the type confusion and they've overwritten this. There is one little extra bit here in that, okay, the window, the size is going to be the size, but there is a call in this control flow to XX client free window class extra bytes. So this is going to call out to user space, but the attacker can hook that the same way that they hooked the alloc. So they can hook the alloc, they can hook the free, and consequently they can just turn this into a no op, a no operation, a do nothing function. It immediately returns having not freed this old thing and consequently everything will be good. All right, and then it returns and the attacker has succeeded. So what was the fix for this? Well, the fixes this time occur in the XXX client alloc window class extra bytes. This is the kernel side of this function. So I've been simplifying everything, acting like that's just the user space function that's called. But in reality, there is a kernel side version as implied by the XXX. So there is a kernel side invocation of this. I just kind of didn't want to get into it because, you know, how the KE user mode callback, that's the actual call out to user space. So like that's the point at which it goes out and then when it returns, it comes back. So just for simplicity, I've been leaving out the kernel side and just say, ah, oh, yeah, we call out to user space and come back. But in reality, it calls in kernel space to this function first. And this time, this is where Microsoft chose to put the fix because again, previously it was fixed in create window X, but 
uh, it was you know the use of of this function by create window x that ultimately led to the vulnerability so now because there's many more places that can get here uh, in order to have a single choke point for all those control flow paths they just made a change in here so what is the change well the change is to check whether or not that dw extra flag has the hex 800 the bit 11 set and if that is set then it is going to always return zero it's going to say i don't care what the attacker sent back from user space i'm just going to return zero instead all right so that seems good to me so basically now if if there's been a magical flip between when they called up to user space and when they came back and all of a sudden this flag has been set when it shouldn't have been set before well then it'll go ahead and return zero it is still, of course, worth knowing that, you know, these are all a whole bunch of complicated interaction code and consequently, you know, there could still be lots of room for attackers to maneuver and find new functions that get called in different ways and potentially play these same games in new variants. Okay, so what does this sequence diagram look like with the new behavior of the patched kernel side xxx client alloc window class extra bytes? What happens is the typical thing as before they do succeed in getting this type confusion going on but when they return their acid value there's going to be this new check if this type confusion has occurred if this flag hex 800 is set then always return zero so now instead of this being acid this is a nice clean zero and so when we follow that control flow then this will be non-zero from before this will now be zero, so it's not even gonna get into this control flow path. We go out, we skip over, and we get to here. This is the existing allocation, it's set there. This is set to zero, and so now this has been nulled out. And so now this is no longer useful to an attacker for playing those games with set window long type functions uh, because this is just gonna be a zero instead of an offset to a known data structure in kernel space. 